Good evening. Appreciate everyone being here this evening, especially those that are visiting with us. We appreciate you being here. If you open your Bibles and turn to James, please. James, we'll spend a, just a couple of minutes in James chapter 1. So we often come on Wednesday night and we talk about uh, the, the blessing it is to step out of the world, to get away from the trials of this world, and to uh, sing songs of praise and study God's word. And that truly is a blessing. And when we think about the James, what he says in chapter 2, in verse 2 of chapter 1, it's, it can be a little confusing. So let, let's read verses 1 and 2 in James. James, the servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. And so we talk on Wednesday nights about getting away from the world and removing all of the thoughts and the pressures that we have. And Joy's, James is telling us that we need to take joy in those trials. So it can be a little confusing, right? We, we face these trials in this, in this world and this earth that we live on. It could be our, you know, the worldly desires that we're faced with, the influences that we're faced with, the disappointment, uh, the sickness that either ourselves or our loved ones have. We face death. We face the, the loss of loved ones that are taken untimely. And sometimes these trials are unbearable. They're hard to understand. But I would contend that, that these trials don't create joy, right? That earthly joy that we're thinking of. So what does James mean? Let's read a little further. So again, verse 2. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness or peace or patience. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So as Christians, we need to understand and believe, truly believe that these trials that we're facing... It's testing our faith, but it's, it's creating endurance. It's creating this steadfastness or this patience. And this patience, when it takes full effect, then we can experience or maybe be perfect or complete, lacking in nothing. So secondarily, I believe, turn with me to Philippians chapter 3. Secondarily, I believe that as Christians, we need to, we need to continually remind ourselves that, that we have hope. That we're here for a short time. Life's quickly passing away, and those of us who are Christians realize this world is not our home. We have the hope through Christ's death and resurrection that we will be reunited with, be reunited with God and Jesus, our Savior, and all the faithful that have gone on before us. If we live that life that's according to the pattern that he's given, us to, through, given to us through his word. Paul understood dealing with trials, and he understood what, what that joy was and that perfect peace. Let's read uh, chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, and then we'll jump down to, to verses 20 through 21. Not that, I've our, not that I have already obtained this, or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider it, it that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God and Jesus Christ, We'll skip down to verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from, it, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to, be, to subject all things to himself. Verse 1 of chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my, my beloved. So we come to a close, brethren. We, we want to count it all joy that when we meet trials of various kinds, we know that the testing of our faith will, faith will produce steadfastness, that we may be perfect and complete. If you're visiting with us tonight and um, you're not a party of, part of this body of Christ, unfortunately, um, you don't have that hope if you've not put on Christ in baptism. But there is still time, and that time is now. We're only promised today, tonight. And so if you have the need of the prayers, or if you'd like to be baptized into Christ, please come as we stand and as we sing.